This is Good Morning Kenya and we continue with the program and as I had mentioned earlier on the intro, we will be having a conversation on preventive medicine and natural remedies and joining me for this particular conversation is uh, Jim Ayodo and Jim Ayodo is the president of Medical Missionary Movement International and also joining us this morning is Dokars Ayodo and Dokars is an executive member of that particular movement. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank You're doing well this morning? Yes, yes. yes. All right, let us start by um, defining when we talk about preventive medicine and natural remedy, what exactly are we looking at? Yeah, uh, when you say preventive medicine, natural remedies, mm -hmm. uh, as we know, prevention is better than cure. Yes. Uh, you can prevent something before it comes, and if you have ways and means of preventing it, mm -hmm. uh, you're safer and better, because when it comes, you're in pain, and it costs a lot, uh, it's expensive, uh, so if you can manage it before it comes, mm -hmm. uh, that's the best way, uh, mm -hmm. because it, you may not end up in hospital or you may not end up in surgery, you may not end up in, in pain. Uh, so, but if it comes, there are other ways by which you can, you can actually uh, uh, take care of it naturally. Because mm -hmm. God gave us, uh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, by the way, mm -hmm. and so we, uh, we use uh, instructions from God or commandments from God in managing our diseases mm -hmm. in such a way uh, there are so many uh, natural remedies that God has given around us. Uh, things that are around you, you can find them cheaply or you can find them uh, freely. Uh, you can use that and you can manage some of these diseases. But if you, if you can't, if, you, if you're overwhelmed by it, then you rush to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So the best way is if you can prevent it or if you can use whatever is around you to take care of them and then you hand over. Yeah, yes. I, I just want us to clarify something. You know, many a times when we talk about natural remedies, you know, what goes to people's mind is the traditional way of doing things. And also, one may think that you are trying to, um, like, we are doing away with hospitals and doctors. Mm -hmm. I would just want us to clarify uh, that yeah. before we... Uh, yes. we no, it's an, it's a, I could say it's like a help aid. Huh? Yeah. Um, le let me use the aspect of the word disease, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we go to hospital because we have a disease, we are sick. Eh? Mm -hmm. But if you actually split that word into two, it says this is. Mm -hmm. So that means that our bodies, the way they are made, eh? mm -hmm. uh, just like, let me look at an example of a machine. If it has systems to tell you that there's something wrong, like mm -hmm. if you're a vehicle, you're driving, and then maybe there's less fuel, it'll alert. Eh? Mm -hmm. So this ease is lack of ease. So your body is actually speaking to you. It's telling you there's something wrong. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, a lot of times, let me give an example. Like uh, when someone has a fever, a lot of times, yeah, we think, okay, it's true. It's indicating that there's actually a problem, that mm -hmm. there's a that child is sick. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's telling you that your body has started to fight. Yes, your body has started to fight, and that's why I, I, I'm bringing this because you said the aspect of, of traditional systems. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, in traditional systems, there used to be something called, um, in my local tongue, it's called fundroke. Mm -hmm. uh, Kiswahili had said, Dawayamoto ni moto, and you'd wonder, why am I having a fever and you're using heat? And it's not only in African traditional systems, if you look at um, even the Scandinavian countries, they have something called a sauna. And people think a sauna is just to go and relax. Mm. But they used to do that before their long winters because during the winter, they have a lot of colds. The aspect of preventative, I'm still getting onto that. Yeah. They have a lot of colds. So they're anticipating a lot of illness or disease. So to mitigate that, what do they do? Mm. They have saunas. And uh, Finland is a land of many lakes also. Of course, during the winter, it is, it, they're very cold. Sometimes they're iced over. So what do they do? Every house has a sauna, every mm. single house. Yeah, has a sauna. So as winter approaches to, uh, towards autumn or fall, you go to the sauna, you heat up, you heat up, and then you go and dip yourself in the cold water, frigid, yeah, mm -hmm. for a few minutes, then you go to the sauna again. What does that do? It mm -hmm. just stimulates your body. So just understanding the aspect that, especially now that we even have science in hospital, we can anticipate that the flu season is coming. We can anticipate that, and, and we are told a lot of times. So there are things, 
and they are very physiological and that's the good thing and mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying apart from thinking of it as just African indigenous there are systems that for now have been only researched and show that they help the body mm -hmm. to prevent and mitigate in case there are problems yeah so it's not it's not removing uh, health is a big thing yeah yes and um, uh, the aspect of prevention is just helping to reduce the disease burden by increasing awareness amongst the population, one, and then giving them skills. Some of them indigenous. Indigenous doesn't mean primitive. Mm -hmm. um, I think our ancestors were very bright. And there are some things, as I said, research is catching up and saying, wow, they used to do this. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's very good. And in fact, as we go, we'll talk about one thing, charcoal, later on. Yeah. Um, uh, it seems primitive, but it's very scientific, it's very advanced, it's very modern. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah, and, and, uh, just, just before you continue, sure. uh, just to clarify that, uh, just to make sure that you know that we are not advocating for removing people from hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not our thing. Uh, there's this Department of uh, uh, Preventive Medicine and Natural Remedies, it's, it's also schooled. Uh, you go to school for it mm. and you graduate for it mm -hmm. and we are specialists in that. It's, uh, the, the Adventists are known for health. The health is, is, is a broad thing. It's not just uh, dealing with drugs only, but you, the way you prevent and the way you can also use natural remedies. So we are not telling people to get out of uh, hospitals. hospitals. Mm -hmm. That should be very clear. Yeah. Uh, like I, I've seen uh, around these days, there's this uh, turmoil that is going around that people are uh, uh, chucking people out of hospitals. Mm -hmm. No, it's not that. Those are just other people that are misusing uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, there's preventive medicine and natural remedies. So if, if, if we talk about natural remedies, uh, it includes a lot of things. It mm -hmm. includes plants, it includes uh, the water, sun, water, exercise. Uh, fresh mm -hmm. air. Yeah. It's a, it's a broad thing and mm -hmm. it's uh, what we have naturally so as we go on you'll see how how we, yeah. we work I on want it. to add something just before you ask mm -hmm. um, um, if you talk about the big picture uh, a lot of our our, our um, citizens sometimes go to India for further health services and what we could look at it as is not as looking at it as two separate entities but entities that can interact mm -hmm. yes Much. because if I go to India it's not a big deal if I decide to use Ayurveda, yes? Mm -hmm. And many people do that. I, I can decide. And uh, even, even in Korea. Even in Korea. You can have NHIF. Okay, they don't have NHIF. But I can have the, the, the system. Mm -hmm. And I can decide, okay, I want to use this. And we can refer one for another, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because one thing about, um, about preventive health medicine and, and natural remedies is that the focus is more on home-based care. Because, yes, I go to hospital. I'm admitted maybe for a week, two, maybe three Mm -hmm. But in the end, I go back home. Yes, so yeah. what do I do? Are there things that I can, if I'm aware of, can help reduce my disease burden, can help um, reduce my pain, mm. can help um, even reverse the disease? It's very possible. Yeah. Yes. And um, speaking about that, what are some of the effective um, natural remedies one, that, that we can talk about? Let me start with a very simple one. It doesn't seem like so. Exercise. Mm. Let me start with a simple one that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. But exercise is medicine. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's a good medicine. medicine. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I want to give one example. Yeah? Someone, I mean, if, if you go to the scientific world, they may say it's what is called anecdotal. But mm -hmm. this is a relative of mine who had complications of, um, of, uh, of diabetes. Yes, diabetes is a chronic ailment. And um, uh, okay, anyway, basically, long story short, eh? mm -hmm. he needed some transplants. Yeah, he needed a heart and lung transplant, mm -hmm. and he was put on the list. And uh, he actually went to India. And of course, if you're looking for a transplant, you have to wait for a donor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's on the waiting list. Eh? Mm -hmm. And um, because of the things that uh, some of the things, as I said, are natural. Because as I said, most people think you just go to herbs. No, 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 no. Yeah, exercise. So he decided, okay. Um, uh, as I said, we are Adventists. Yeah? We teach a lot of, of, of lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, modalities. In fact, we, we use an acronym called New Start. Yes? Mm -hmm. N starts from nutrition, Lishebora, yeah? Nutrition. Mm -hmm. E, exercise. W, water. S, sunshine. T, temperance. A, air. R, rest. T, trust in God. Yeah? Mm. So, what, um, and he was on oxygen. He had to be on oxygen all the time because he was swollen. His, his heart was failing. His lungs, yeah, were almost gone. 
And while on the waiting list, he said, why don't we try this exercise? Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, he had done some things in nutrition already. Let's do this exercise. Actually, he was already in India waiting for... For, for the transplant. For the transplant. Yes. yes. Yeah. So he decides today... I mean, he's, he's bad that if he walks, he hardly he pants. He can't hardly go far. But his wife encouraged him. Yes. And today, took two steps, then three steps, then four. Then all of a sudden, within, I think, a week or two... Mm -hmm. He, he had a pedometer, mm -hmm. so he can see his paces. He realizes he's gone five kilometers. Mm -hmm. yeah? In fact, his wife now, who's a caretaker, is more <laughs> tired than him. So anyway, he was called back for some checks. And the doctor, because now, I mean, th th there was going to be two teams of surgeons, eh? mm -hmm. the one dealing with the heart and the one dealing with the lungs. So he goes to one of them. I don't know which one he went to first, but the, the one says, um, um, let's say it's the heart. I don't remember which one was first, but it says your heart is fine. You just go talk to the lung doctor. Yes, and um, he goes to the lung doctor and he says your lungs are fine. You go talk. <laughs> let's come. Then she said, no, let's just all come together because it's supposed to be. A, I mean, uh, to working together mm -hmm. and see this. And he was given a clean bill of health. Just was from exercise. Exercise. Mm -hmm. And you know, in our lifestyles now, and um, even Mashinani now, we have motorbikes. And I was saying that's bad. That has enhanced a lot of things. Eh? Mm. But making a deliberate effort. To yeah? move your body. To move your body. Yeah. Even when you're chronically ill. And sometimes I think about even the fiscal benefits, the financial, eh? mm -hmm. which is going to cost 13 to 17 million. And exercise sorted it out. So a lot of, in our day to day, we even have a, um, a, a department special for uh, non-communicable diseases, NCDs, yeah? So, and they do a lot of stuff to help because most of our disease burden, believe you me right now, is NCDs. That's your hypertension, your diabetes, um, your cancer. I can't, I can't you, it's not contagious. If I have it, you wouldn't get it. Mm. But it's our heaviest disease burden, yeah? Mm. In fact, number one on the list is hypertension and heart disease. Eh? And there's something we can do about it out of the hospital, not saying we're not going to hospital, no. Mm -hmm. Beyond hospital, now I have hypertension. What can I do? Mm -hmm. And of course, even in hospital already, they advise people, do more exercise, yeah, reduce on this and this. But it needs to be given more emphasis because those are the natural remedies, mm -hmm. yeah? And there are other things now, um, I mean, other additional things that can help, but I'm just saying that is the scope we should look at it and embrace it because the disease burden is there and we need to mitigate because health is wealth. Mm -hmm. Yes, as we are looking to empower our people, if they are healthy, they can work better. They're That's more productive. Um, it's, it's good for everybody. Yeah. Yes. Maybe what are some of the chronic diseases that can be you know, prevented by this preventative medicine? And, and, and I think uh, she has mentioned a few things here, mm. hypertension, diabetes. Yeah. Maybe she can, she can just tell us something little on how to manage uh, hypertension. Just a quick one <laughs> on how to yes. do that. Let me start from, um, uh, sometimes maybe some of us maybe have gone to hospital and your doctor says your pressure is a little bit. Maybe someone is listening and that has happened. And they tell you, before I put you on meds, mm -hmm. yeah? Try and do something. Of course, they'll talk about exercise. But there are also the other things that can help. One is that water treatment, yeah? Uh, because That's what happens in pressure? Yes, hydrotherapy. Mm -hmm. And hydrotherapy, you know, sometimes when you use technical terms, you think of some big thing. And it can be made uh, technical, mm -hmm. but is any use, just use of water, including drinking water, mm -hmm. yeah? So, um, uh, so uh, let me just explain what happens in hypertension. The basic, just the basic, yeah? Yeah, please. Our blood vessels are pipes. Mm -hmm. um, blood passes through, blood is fluid. Um, uh, the, the cleaner the pipe, the easier it is for the blood to flow. But if anything starts blocking, yeah, then, then the, 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 the lumen becomes smaller. The, the pipe is smaller. Mm. So that means the heart has to pump harder to push that, yeah, mm -hmm. to push blood so you can stay alive. So that's basically the essence. There's a blockage, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the biggest blocker, the biggest blocker is cholesterol, the biggest blocker. So understand that concept, then I go to how can we help it. Number one, just mm -hmm. drink more water. You know, many of us don't drink water. Um, we'll have other beverages. For some people, water is flat. Yeah. Some people, when I'm really thirsty, that's when I take water. Mm -hmm. But you have to realize that by the time your body is telling you I'm thirsty, it's like an engine that's ab about to, to, um, to knock. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's like now we can't go anymore. So just have the habit of, of daily drinking adequate water yeah mm -hmm. and especially warm water yes yes mm -hmm. <laughs> warm water because if if the blood is more fluid 
then there is less resistance. Yeah, yeah. That's one, a simple thing. Mm -hmm. And you can find that if it was a, a, a pressure that was slightly elevated, just the water itself might actually reduce it. Yeah? So that's one. Number two, um, water treatment externally. Yeah? Um, there are many uh, heat dilates. Heat, even when it's hot, your blood vessels will be open. Yes. Yeah? And um, even in hospital, when, when they're given medications, a lot of those medications are to dilate the blood vessel. So if this blood vessel has been blocked, semi-blocked, and we put some heat, it can help. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Whatever else we are doing with, with medication or whatever it is, it can help to dilate. dilate and, and then on top of that, uh, the heat also helps to, I say the cholesterol is the main thing. Cholesterol is fat. Mm -hmm. yeah? So if there is heat, it will melt some if we can use it <laughs> we can use that term yeah so that will help to reduce so there's something a simple technique that can be used at home called the hot foot bath mm -hmm. and it's just um and, and uh, it's the simplest one i mean there are more technical things you can use taking a bucket 20 liter with uh, hot water as not to scald you please but as hot as you can tolerate mm. and putting your legs in and then you cover yourself with a with a with a blanket just to get that heat yeah mm -hmm. yes i may not have money maybe to go to a sauna or or, or to go into a more more more, more um uh, technical place but i can do that mm -hmm. and the aim is making you sweat if your body has gotten enough heat to make you sweat that heat will open the blood vessels some and you'll realize i always tell people this try this huh? maybe you have pressure mm -hmm. um and you've had it and maybe right now hospital sometimes even because of the strike maybe you can't go go and do that Mm -hmm. Put it in a bucket. Eh? Put your legs in. Please don't scald. Let me repeat that. But as hot as you can tolerate. So you, you, in that case, you have to test yeah. the water. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the temperature, the water, by putting your hands in there yeah. for at least a minute, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm. If your hands can tolerate it, then your legs, your legs then you, tolerate yeah, it. Mm -hmm. Then your legs can tolerate it for at least 30 minutes to one hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you wrap yourself in a and, and not 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 lukewarm because if it's a little cold, it may not do, do the, the job. job. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a little therapeutic. Make you sweat. Sweat. Yes. But the sweating is just indicative that there is so much heat, the body is trying to dissipate it, mm -hmm. so that heat will help to open up your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you do that. You wrap yourself. But then the thing is, when there's excessive heat, you, you can also you, get you a wrap, headache. You wrap yourself from, from, from the, the neck, neck downwards, downward, yes. In maybe a duvet yeah. or a blanket, yeah. depending on uh, your size, uh, as long as it can wrap Cover. you around, yeah. uh, wrap your body plus the bucket mm -hmm. so that uh, the, the, the heat the can heat be retained. retained. In the, mm -hmm. Yes. So that's why I'm saying it's a simple thing. Even if you're in, in the remote area, is something that you can do. But then you, you put what is called a cold compress on the forehead because the, the head can get, um, can get a headache. And sometimes if you have pressure, you also have one of the indicators sometimes is you have a headache. Yeah. So it keeps the head cool. Mm -hmm. So the body is dilated. So we, 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 uh, we dilate as many of the blood vessels as possible, but the head is kept cool. 30 minutes. Take your pressure before and then take your pressure after. You'll mm -hmm. find that there's a drop. It, it will probably not drop all the way to normal in, initially, but there'll be a, a drop such that if, I was, if my pressure was such that it was... Um, very high it comes to it still may, it may still be high but at least it is it is a safer high yeah mm -hmm. and so hydrotherapy helps a lot drink water you can do that external th uh, techniques and there are many others Some people have bathtubs you can use them mm -hmm. yes um uh, people just think it's for relaxing but it it helps even in reducing that pressure then the other thing the third thing is diet mm -hmm. and that's very important because cholesterol is the main uh, problem yeah? yeah and for that i will refer you um now that is your digital um go and look at clinton because everybody knows bill clinton mm -hmm. yeah look at the issues he had with his heart he was supposed to actually have some bypass surgery at some time the and clinton's diet, diet yes <laughs> and in a nutshell it is advising people to move towards a blood plant-based diet because um plants have less inflammation plants uh, don't carry cholesterol for one yeah and they reduce inflammation also so you'll find that the more you take plants, and if you can, if you just become a, I don't know what I'd call it, a plantarian or a vegetarian. vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, the more you eat plants, you'll find that the less. Of course, yeah. the other thing. But one will argue, I mean, when we're, we are taught in school of a balanced diet, you know, so you need all these. You need the protein. You need, but when you entirely, I know there are plant-based proteins yeah. and all that. Yes. So why is it wrong to, like, take um, a meat why is it wrong? Can, 
Okay, l let me ask that. Okay, I'm, I'm taking over everything. Anyway, no, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plant-based <laughs> diet, we haven't said it is wrong. Yeah. See, I've said, especially in the light of, we have a lot of NCDs already, mm -hmm. yeah? And I, I'll say this, because someone also gave me another question, the Maasai, yeah? In our, in our day to day now, yeah? We are very sedentary. Mm -hmm. So what you could have gotten away with, let me put it that way, because you are moving, yes, you, 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 uh, you're moving. Now I will eat it and sit. Mm -hmm. So what happens, yeah? Um, you're in the studio almost all through. So you are, a lot of work is sitting. You take an Uber, you take a motorbike, you take a, yes. So what you could have gotten away with now is hurting you. So that's why we say it first. And mm -hmm. I said, um, uh, you can move. And if you can, because someone out there might be like, oh, it's, an, it's a lifestyle I'd like to take, yeah? And we have communities that are actually vegetarian and they live quite well. Yeah. Yes, they live quite well. So just that aspect that, as you said, I, I think you already answered part of the question. Mm -hmm. We have plant-based proteins, yeah? yeah? And, um, and they're, they're, they're very are effective. Sufficient. They're very effective and they're, mm -hmm. they're numerous ones. So like the community, like you say, like many of the Indian communities are vegetarian. Yeah. And um, I, I, I dare say that they, are, they live well, yes, and not only physically as far as, as ailments, etc., but even, um, and this is maybe a topic for another day, they're, they're and, the entrepreneurs. And, and, they and, are also, the, they're the and also the best, the best quality animals for you to eat mm -hmm. are actually eating plants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Their diet, they're, they're also on, on so get plant based mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just a thought for people, yeah? <coughs> Especially because already our NCDs are high, very, very high. Yeah. There was, there was um, um, a projection that by 2050, diabetes here in sub Saharan Africa mm -hmm. will have increased by 143%. By when? By 2050. Mm. Yes, or we'll all be much older. Mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. So if we are sitting like this, probably two of us would have diabetes and mm. it's an expensive disease and it's yeah but there are things that you can do to help alert people so that uh, that helps now I've, I've moved from my potential diabetes but it's also a lifestyle disease yeah. so when you hear uh, or an uncommunicable disease a lifestyle disease lifestyle is key what we do in hospital yes is is a tidbit all right but I'll ask you to hold that thought yes. we take a commercial break but we'll be back in a moment Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now, before we took that break, Dockers, you had explained on some home remedies for hypertension mm -hmm. and uh, you had just gotten into some remedies on um, diabetes, if we may get to that. Okay, okay, um, yes, uh, um, but let me just, just add something on the hypertension, mm -hmm. um, something that we commonly use at home, um, onions and um, garlic. Yeah, garlic has been studied, prof I mean, in depth, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, in fact, even in the, um, uh, some, some Western countries call it Russian penicillin, because uh, beyond even helping in pressure, it helps even in it as an infective, it helps in infection. If you, a, if you have a cold, issues mm -hmm. like that, it helps to reduce. So you can do that also for hypertension, mm -hmm. and it helps to also lower the pr blood pressure. How do you use pressure. garlic for hypertension? What you do, garlic is very um, potent, mm -hmm. and it can even burn, and I need to put that so that people can know you just don't pop it all the time and take six cloves of garlic and it can actually burn. If you crush garlic and put it on your skin, mm. leave it for more than like 20 minutes, it'll scald. So we need to be careful about that. So the easiest way to use it is to combine it with onion. Onion is, is water-based and so it'll tend to tame the, the strength of garlic. So you just take two cloves of garlic, you can grate or you can blend mm. uh, with a ball of onion and blend it and then mix it with some water to make it easier to take in. It's nasty. It's mm. not <laughs> pleasant, mm -hmm. but it lowers, lowers pressure because um, it's actually a blood thinner. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, caution on that because if someone is on blood thinners, and that's why we say you, we work together, we collaborate. Eh? Mm -hmm. If someone is on blood thinners, they need to know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The doctor needs to know because it can actually, yeah. So it helps to, as we said, the problem was there's a blockage. So um, it helps to make the, 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 the blood more fluid and so it will help to ease the pressure. So it can, it's something that can help. Um, and so that ca comes in as part of lifestyle. Now you don't have to take garlic on an everyday raw because I said garlic can, can, can cause, yes, blood it can even, and, it, and it can also cause wounds. As I told you, it can yeah, scald, it, it can, burns. yes. So it can also scald inside. So you take it for a period of time, maybe the, 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 sometimes the pressure, even sometimes on medication, the pressure it seems to be resistant. So that can help to lower it. Yes. Okay. So on diabetes, diabetes, um, uh, diabetes mellitus is, is, they call it sugar disease, yeah? 
Um, and so most people, at least in hospital, you're taught about uh, watching the amount of, of, of carbs you take. Eh? Um, but a lot of recent studies yeah, have shown that the biggest, the biggest um, pusher, yes, because most of the diabetes people have is what we call diabetes type 2. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's what is called insulin resistance. The, the receptors for insulin are blocked. So they don't have insulin, but they are blocked. Mm. And again, that's a fat issue. Mm -hmm. That's another cholesterol issue. Yeah. So we go back to the similar things that um, affect um, hypertension also push. And that actually, you'll find that many people who have diabetes eventually also get hyper hypertension. Mm -hmm. So their diet is very important, yes? Mm -hmm. Exercise is very important. Uh, the first three letters of new start, let me put it that way. Nutrition, exercise, water. And the good thing is that normally already, Mm -hmm. When someone has diabetes, they usually want to drink a lot of water. So mm -hmm. I think that is usually already something they are doing. And then exercise, encouraging them. Then the nutrition. I'll go back to what I said about uh, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. A plant-based diet, but with complex carbohydrates. Yeah, Complex carbohydrates are, uh, uh, even if you go to hospital, they'll tell you, if you're eating chapati, try to look for brown. If you're eating ugali, try to look for brown. Because it helps to control sugar by itself. Because complex carbohydrates hold onto the sugar and release it slowly. If I eat a refined thing, if I eat just sugar straight, it goes to my blood, but because it's already been broken, it goes into the bloodstream very fast. So if I have diabetes, then my sugar shoots up. Mm -hmm. But complex carbohydrates, because it has fiber, it releases that sugar slowly. So you're using food already to control your, your, your sugar issue, and that can help a lot. And, uh, and uh, I, I can say now yeah, that there are situations where diabetes has been controlled just using that diet, okay. just using it nutrition. And uh, very important, especially with the projection I said that, in the future we are seeing too much diabetes, and it's an expensive disease, it mm, is, it yeah? Is. Um, um, both in terms of outlay of means, they are, you have to buy sticks to, 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 to check your sugar, and the fact that productivity also reduces. I gave you the example of a relative of mine, when he, he was sick, yes, he has to go for further help. Yeah, that draws onto finance, but also is not working. Yeah. So um, it can help a lot because it's a it's a real threat. Okay. It's a real threat. Yes. All right. Now mm -hmm. um, to you, Jim. Um, we've you had touched on charcoal. You yes. di we didn't get much into it. You just mentioned it as one of the preventive uh, preventive medicine that is truly in effective. So if you can just tell us a bit about charcoal and how to use it. Actually, uh, charcoal is an adsorbent. It adsorbs. Uh, it's carbon in uh, if you if you mention it in in Spanish it's carbono carbono carbon simply mm -hmm. means carbon so it absorbs anything that may be toxic or poison to the human body uh, or to the environment in the environment it absorbs mm -hmm. so uh, if you have any condition that uh, that worries you mm -hmm. okay if there's any toxicity that may be uh, near you or on you or in you, mm -hmm. just apply charcoal. Mm -hmm. uh, an example, before we, we even get further to it, uh, we see the Kalanjins, uh, they put charcoal, they add charcoal to their milk. Mm -hmm. uh, the milk that you, you uh, what, what do you call that milk? Morsik. Morsik. Yes, yeah. yes uh, they have morsik and they add charcoal to it. That charcoal absorbs uh, the hydroxyls that are in there uh, yeah. uh, absorbs the 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 uh, you know the bitterness that you find in uh, the ukali that you find in in the milk. Mm -hmm. So the milk becomes a little sweeter. If you uh, look at the the milk, or if you taste the milk from the kalenjins and the milk from the kisses or the milk from the lures, mm -hmm. though the kalenjin one would be a little smoother or softer because they put a uh, charcoal in it. Uh, another one, uh, in the U.S., uh, Mahazo is close to, uh, to uh, uh, where, where the space shuttle uh, is uh, shot up. Now, the space center, what you call the space center, and every time we went there to, uh, to see or to take people to tour the place, uh, when you get to that place, they tell you that the astronauts, before they actually take off to, to space, they must have charcoal. In the list of the things that they, they need to pack with them, uh, mm. there has to be charcoal. One, number one, is charcoal. Uh, why do they have charcoal? Charcoal helps is in, 
a nausea if you're nauseated mm. there's some people who, uh, whom when they are traveling they feel like vomiting uh, when you take charcoal you take two uh, two tablespoonfuls of uh, activated charcoal yeah. uh, activated charcoal powder if you activate it it acts better uh, but even even regular charcoal you just grind it and you take that and you add to water warm water would be better you add to water and you drink it it absorbs uh, the toxicity that may may make you be nauseated or the fermentation that may make you nauseated uh, number two it also helps in diarrhea when somebody has diarrhea or you have food poisoning for any reason mm. you just take charcoal you drink charcoal mm -hmm. and instantly it helps you uh, another one if you're vomiting people who are vomiting if you're vomiting for any reason yeah. uh, maybe uh, for food poisoning or for any nauseated no stuff mm -hmm. or when you have malaria when somebody has malaria or when somebody has a uh, fungal infection internal fungal infection you can use a charcoal and it will help you if somebody has taken poison poisoning in every lab laboratory there has to be charcoal mm -hmm. whichever laboratory you go to they must have charcoal somewhere mm -hmm. for chemical poisoning or if uh, you come in contact with some chemical that that is corrosive you can use charcoal you drink it or you can also bind it in binding it or making a poultice uh, you take the charcoal to the quantity uh, of whatever you you want to bind mm -hmm. and you mix it with the water and you can take a little a little flaxseed uh, like maybe three to one uh, three amount of charcoal, three amount of charcoal to uh, one flaxseed, uh, one amount of uh, flaxseed, depending on what you use, you can use a spoon or you can use a cup, whatever you use. Uh, you mix it for consistency, and then you take that consistency, you take that uh, paste, you put it, you add it to a, a white cloth, linen cloth, mm -hmm. or white cotton cloth. It has to be white. I'm stressing the word white mm. because if you don't put white, if, if it's colored, uh, charcoal will, will draw all the, the coloring and, and add it to you or okay. add it to the surface. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's that, that strong. Mm -hmm. So it has to be white, plain white. Uh, you add it there and you wrap it and you bind there. You add it to uh, where, where poison is. It also helps actually when you have a snake bite, yeah. snake bite, a dog bite, a spider bite, or any other bite that that uh, that comes on you, or human bite, whatever the bite, uh, any wound that you have, <laughs> okay, any wound that you have, mm -hmm. uh, whether the wound wound is ulcerous or fresh wound or whatever, you 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 bind it there, you put it there. For maybe an hour, you or crush the charcoal and put yeah, it on your charcoal wounds. powder. Yeah, yeah, it has to be charcoal powder. Mm -hmm. Okay, the charcoal powder. You take the charcoal powder and you add it to water, and you can add flaxseed to it. If you don't have flaxseed, you can do uh, uh, wheat flour. Mm. Wheat flour acts also better because that acts as a moisture absorbent. Mm -hmm. It absorbs absorbs uh, moisture into it and keeps it uh, wet. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout if you don't do that it may dry up and it cracks up okay mm -hmm. you bind it there for maybe an hour to three hours you remove it and then you you add another one for another six hours it draws out the toxicity uh, whether it's a snake bite whether it's a what bite another one uh, if you're in a room that is uh, toxic or maybe you painted the the house yeah. you know fresh painting sometimes if you have a painted house and you get in there you sleep there you'll feel you know stuffy and mm. you may cough for other reasons or you may be sick uh, may be sick for any reason of, of uh, uh, paint you just take the charcoal you don't have to crush it you take the uh, the uh, you know the stock of charcoal and you put them there on the corners you sleep mm. And it draws all the 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 gas, mm. the gas that comes toxic into it, and so you can sleep safe. Uh, uh, if somebody has uh, maybe stomach pain or stomach ache or gas in you, uh, you can take charcoal, and the gas would be absorbed, and you won't have gas. Uh, 
-hmm. If somebody is uh, spoiling the air near you, <laughs> you just take charcoal and you give them charcoal and they take charcoal <laughs> and that would be done. Or you just take charcoal, if you don't want to, if they don't want to take it, uh, you just take the charcoal and you put near the person, mm. uh, between you and the person, and the gas will just go into that. You won't suffer. Mm. Those are some of the benefits of charcoal. Uh, now, charcoal, you can also have charcoal. Uh, if, you have, if you have any uh, pimples, you know pimples? Yeah. Or you, your face is rough for, for that reason, mm. uh, you can take charcoal and you do a mask. Charcoal facial mask. Yeah, the charcoal masks. Charcoal mm. masks. Mm, that are being sold. Oh, they're being sold somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, these people know the benefits of charcoal for that reason. Mm -hmm. and, and for your reason, you don't have to buy it anywhere. You can make your own. Mm -hmm. You take charcoal, charcoal powder, and you mix it with, uh, with honey for consistency. Mm -hmm. And you take it and you just, uh, you know, you massage your face. Mm -hmm. And you, you may leave it there for maybe 30 minutes to one hour, or maybe two hours, if you, depending on the comfort you have with it. Mm -hmm. And once you wash it, you'll feel how smooth your skin is. Mm -hmm. And that's a natural remedy. Because some people go to the hospital just because of the, their faces, the, fa the way the face look like. Some people go for uh, surgery, plastic surgery, just because your face, you don't like your face. Mm -hmm. But you can do charcoal. And, and you take care of yourself and you cure it mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. Too many remedies for yes. charcoal, you yes. know. Charcoal. And I've, I've not even mentioned half of them, mm -hmm. just because we don't have time. Mm -hmm. But there, there's a lot that we can talk about charcoal. Yeah, it mm -hmm. has so many benefits. Yes. And um, just as we are mentioning the benefits of it, does it have um, like side effects? Because I can no. imagine now that we've told people about it, they will be, it. you know, they can decide to be in t yes. take it, uh, taking it, you know. Yeah, let me, let me just mention and something. Charcoal is not food. Yeah. Charcoal is not food. So don't take charcoal for food. Uh, number two, if you're taking any medication, if you're on any, any drugs or medication from the hospital, just make sure you take charcoal one hour before or one hour after, after, to be very safe two hours before, two hours after. Because if you, if you take charcoal with uh, your medication, it will bind it. It okay. takes it as uh, toxic. So it will bind it and you'll not get the benefits of, uh, of uh, uh, your medication. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, don't take charcoal powder. Mm -hmm. Don't take it when it's powder. You have okay. to... Mix yeah, water. you have to mix it with water. You have to put it with water because if you take it uh, as powder, it will choke you. It will go in and it will, as, as it goes down, it will be grabbing anything that it finds there, mm -hmm. the saliva and everything. It it will choke you and you can die from it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not food. Uh, now the other thing also, if you take too much of charcoal every day, you don't have to take it too much. Uh, you don't have to take it too much. You don't have to take it every day. Uh, take it three times a week for your condition after, for three weeks. After three weeks, you don't have to take it again unless your condition is advised by your uh, uh, primary health care physician. Mm. Uh, the other thing you can also take note of, if you take it too much, it will pile up in your appendix. Yeah, because I imagine... Yes. Yeah. Uh, because the appendix, you know, the appendix is a vacuum. So if you take it too much, it will suck it mm -hmm. and get it down there. So mm -hmm. you don't have to take too much of charcoal, you know. Just take it prescribed, just the way we've talked about it. If you're watching, you know, just take it as pres prescribed. Two tablespoonfuls of activated charcoal powder in a glass of water, like, like for this one, two tablespoonfuls is good enough. Mm -hmm. And you stir it to mix it, and then you take it, you mm -hmm. drink it. Mm -hmm. If you're just taking care of... Uh, uh, these normal conditions, maybe stomach ache or, or nausea or diarrhea or vomit, things like those. Mm -hmm. The other thing also, if you have uh, uh, ulcers, uh, people who have ulcers, if you have ulcers, you take charcoal, it will bind uh, the, the acidity that is in you. Mm -hmm. It will bind it and you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not cure, but it will uh, is in the condition that you have for curing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you can just add something, because someone may get shocked. When you take charcoal, your stool will be black. Yeah? 
because oh, it yeah. might shock <laughs> someone. Because yeah. charcoal is a physical agent. It, it, it just draws, yes? It, it draws. It doesn't go into the bloodstream. It stays in the gut. So it absorbs things like reverse osmosis back into the gut, and then it will remove it. That's why it's very good for a lot of... You see, well, amongst the things he has mentioned, stomach ailments, because it will bind, yeah? And poisoning. Even in hospital, that's mm -hmm. what is used when someone has poisoning. Some of the things that are used. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we've spoken about um, those remedies, some of the very available, you know, easily available remedies that one can use to prevent some of these uh, diseases. And um, how do we incorporate, you know, some of these uh, natural uh, remedies in our day to day? Is, um, we've talked about exercise, which is something you can do on a daily just to prevent yourself from getting um, sick, you know. What are some of the other things that maybe one can incorporate in their daily routines to ensure that they keep the doctor away? Fresh air. Mm. Uh, fresh air is important. Mm. Uh, if you don't have fresh air, uh, your lungs will be clogged. If you don't have fresh air, uh, the place would be contaminated, you know, would be polluted. So fresh air is good because it, it opens up the lungs and fresh air gives you enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, your body needs a lot of oxygen to, uh, to metabolize your, your, your carbohydrates or your glucose, mm -hmm. uh, or your glucose will give you energy. If you don't do that, uh, then you'll, you'll be less of energy. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, the other thing also, with, uh, if, you, if you don't have fresh air, a mold will grow in the room, mold. Mm. And mold is, is, is very dangerous. And I think maybe she, she, she may want to talk about mold for, because uh, she, her thesis on master's thesis, she had, uh, what was it? Sick building syndrome. Sick building syndrome. Mm. Uh, sick building syndrome, meaning if there's no fresh air in the room, mold will, will uh, grow all over and you'll be sick to death. Mm. You can be sick to death. So fresh air is good enough. Uh, fresh air also helps in keeping uh, the other bugs away, the other uh, insects that may be in, in the room. Mm -hmm. If you open up uh, the rooms or if you open up the windows or the doors, fresh air comes in. Or if you're driving, now you can remember when you're driving and there's no fresh air in there, uh, the place will be, begin to, to be stuffy, yeah. you know. And you can, you can dizzy up and you can cause an accident. Pass out. Yeah, yeah you can pass out. Mm -hmm. So fresh air is important. When you go to the hospital, when you come to the hospital, the first thing uh, they do, if you're so sick, they put you in oxygen, you know. Uh, put you on oxygen and whenever they put you on oxygen you see that somebody somebody comes back alive mm -hmm. uh, so what about if you if you have plenty of oxygen out there uh, you'd be healthier for many reasons mm -hmm. uh, if you deny yourself oxygen uh, the more you deny yourself oxygen the more your body deteriorates for many reasons mm -hmm. I'll add um, um, the R in our new starter. Eh? Before that, let me just add to that. Even wounds, there's something sometimes when you have wounds that are chronic, sometimes just putting extra oxygen, even in hospital, yeah? Because a lot of, 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 of organisms that decay the wound are anaerobic. They don't like oxygen. So you flood them with oxygen, sometimes that reduces the disease burden. Just an addition on that. Now, mm -hmm. rest. It's very important because we are looking towards a 24-7 economy. People are working and some people think that sleeping is a waste of time. Mm. But um, uh, every time you sleep, it's actually repair. And our sleep today will help us for production tomorrow. Mm. Probably you ever thought of a day maybe you didn't sleep one day, two days. Even s uh, normal duties that you do, because they drag. Mm. But on top of all of that, eh, if you are chronically awake at night, that also increases your risk for cancer. Most people don't know that, mm -hmm. yeah? Because each time, Kiswahili says, usipo ziba ufa, utajenga kukuta, yeah? yeah? Each time there's an ufa, there's a crack, yeah? There's something that ha has dis there's, is in disrepair. When you're put to sleep, eh, mm -hmm. it repairs. That's why sometimes when you're sick, you feel like you want to sleep some more, because it helps. It's like when you take your car to the mechanic, it is put to rest, and then you, do, you work on it. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very important. So it is, uh, we have to have a conscious um, effort to make sure we put in our uh, eight hours of sleep, seven, not two, not one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It helps. It might seem like a waste of time, but when you do it, even your productivity is, is much faster later on. Mm -hmm. yeah? And one thing I just want to notice, the hours before midnight, 
are worth more than the were hours after midnight. Yeah. They're so let's say double. Let's let me give you an example. Before. Yes, okay. let me give you an example. Um, say I've said, like maybe I've mentioned, let's take eight hours per day if you, yeah? I mean, every day you, you should sleep. And then you're thinking, I have a lot of work. If you're a student, exams are coming, I want to read. Eh? Mm -hmm. Just try this. Mm -hmm. One day sleep at 7, 7 p.m. One day if you have, yeah, 7. Mm -hmm. You know you can wake up at 11 and think it's morning. Yes, and how many hours are those? Only four. Yeah, four hours. Yes, because those four hours, each hour before midnight was double what you'll have after midnight. And I can decide, let me try and get eight hours after midnight. Maybe I slept at one or two. I might even wake up at eight or nine, but I'm still feeling tired. Mm. Because most of the repair work happens around 10, 11, 12, 1. Yeah, because there's some hormones that are actually re re released, eh? mm -hmm. and that's their prime time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they work on with the with the circadian rhythms. Yeah, that's how the sun works when it's set, all that stuff. So um, rest is important, mm -hmm. and apart from the daily rest, very very important in our busyness, in our busyness, eh? take at least one 24-hour cycle and have some rest. It helps to rejuvenate. Yeah, because a lot of times. Uh, especially if you're self-employed or entrepreneur, you can work 24-7, mm -hmm. yeah? But one day you might be strong, and then one day your body just breaks down because there's a rejuvenation that also occurs, eh? mm -hmm. There's a seven-day cycle. We have seven days a week. There's a seven-day cycle. But your body resets every weekend, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. yeah? So make a deliberate effort, even if you are very busy, but put that time out because, as you say, it health is wealth. If you don't take care of it, it will stop you at one time. If I get very sick, even that busyness... I'll have to stop so I can take care of my health. Mm -hmm. So it's important to and, understand And actually, that. just to add something little to that, research has proven that Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, the body rejuvenates. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's scientific. Yeah. Friday? Friday sunset. Saturday, yeah, and Saturday to sunset. To Saturday sunset, yeah. the body rejuvenates because it completes the cycle and it drives the energy, builds the energy mm -hmm. for another cycle, mm -hmm. a seven day cycle. So that's the time you need to give it its maximum uh, time to actually rejuvenate. That's why mostly weekends are called, uh, you know. Weekends. Yeah, weekends. <laughs> mm. Yeah, a weekend. Uh, a weekend is, is a holiday. Uh, some people choose Sabbath. Some people choose uh, Sunday, but uh, when you look at uh, Saturday, that's actually the last day of the week. Mm -hmm. The other one is now the first day of the week. So, uh, but it's still the, the weekend. You see, it's a weekend. Yeah. So uh, Friday okay. sunset to, to Saturday, Saturday sunset, sunset, the body rejuvenates. Okay. That is that is scientific. Actually, mm -hmm. if if you do if you if you measure, you can do this for yourself. You go measure your like your blood your blood pressure, your normal blood pressure your respiratory rate uh, uh, all through the week. There is a dip. It's like it's telling you it's time to rest yeah. at that particular time. That your Friday is slower. Your rate will be slightly slower. Your pulse rate will be slightly slower. It's like telling you now take a break, take a break. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> relax. <laughs> and and for, right. for, for doctors who are watching, <laughs> they know something called uh, uh, healing crisis. crisis. Mm. Most healing crises are also actually happened. over the weekend. Friday into Sunday morning, you have the body has a healing crisis. It's like the body is trying to fight even the more, the more, the more. And most people pass mm. out at weekends, you know. Okay. Uh, they, they know what that is mm. uh, because the body, the body at that time, the body is struggling to get, to get the little that is there, that is left for, for the week mm -hmm. and to rebuild the next it's like changing shift. So when, when the body is changing shift in that, mm -hmm. uh, the body struggles to roll over. The disease comes even more. Right. That if you, don't, if you don't assist the body even more, you lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, doctors who know at that time, they, they actually work okay, on they the change. body even more. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's actually new.
That's, that's <laughs> news to me. But anyway, thank you so much for thank joining you. us for this particular conversation. Thank you for shedding light. And I hope that the people who are watching us from wherever it is that they are watching us, they have gotten to pick a thing or two from this conversation. Thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you. All right, right now we take a commercial break, but don't you go too far. When we come back, Mike Megwe will be having a conversation on AI. You want to stay tuned for that.